So racial trauma really refers to the fact that experiences of racism can be processed as traumatic. Um, and these experiences of racism can be just a singular instant, it can be a series of experiences, it can be a set of circumstances, the build-up of smaller experiences of racism, the impact of racism will vary from person to person, so it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone who experiences racism is traumatised because of it. This refers to the fact that trauma um, can be passed down from a trauma survivor to their descendants um, and that this cycle often continues because of structural inequalities and people not being able to get the support they need to overcome it. Another thing that isn't always mentioned is the fact that institutional racism and the structural inequalities it creates can also be a form of trauma, exacerbate experiences of trauma and can prevent access to appropriate support to overcome trauma. This is because systemic racism contributes often to a pileup of economic and social stresses and restricts access to healthcare and other essential resources for coping. So understanding racial trauma might also help to explain why people from African and Caribbean backgrounds often report more traumatic events and have higher rates of PTSD than white populations. So within um, sort of education, four main themes sort of emerge, which was how do how experiences of racism and unequal treatment in school impact them experience of teachers treating them differently and children and young people not quite understanding why this is happening and then later on going on to realise actually maybe it did have something to do with my racial, cultural and ethnic background um, and the impact these experiences have and then barriers to getting support in school with unfortunately support not seeming to be appropriate or relevant or aimed towards black, Asian and ethnic minoritised children and young people. In terms of uh, mental health, um, we know that racism can have a huge impact on people's mental health and well-being and increases the risk of developing anxiety and depression. I think it's incredibly important, uh, given what we know about the disproportionate incarceration rates of black and ethnic minoritized um, children and young people in the youth justice system. Um, there really does remain little consideration as to why this disproportionality exists and a real failure to consider the complex social issues that often inform criminal activity. Whilst we see attempts for the YJS to become more trauma informed in a lot of the frameworks and guidance that's been published, there's still limited consideration um, of how we need to adapt this to actually be relevant and aim towards Black, Asian and ethnic minoritized people in the YJS. So this is again something we're trying to address within our research project, um, which is to think about actually how effective and inclusive trauma-informed practice is being delivered by other organizations um, and then trying to identify the best practice and to put the lessons learned into a training package aimed at other practitioners and professionals. Going forward when collecting um, evidence around the effectiveness of trauma-informed practice, um, we need to think about how we how it engages with different groups and different lived experiences. Specifically, we can't just generalize because we know that different cohorts will have different experiences. Um, and I think another thing is to really avoid assuming and, and instead are so always trying to work in a collaborative and co-produced way.